I didn't like painting at all when I was at college. I specialised in painting in second year, and I, I hated it. And first year, I was 18, we had to do, we had to like do animation and painting and film and tapestry and all these things, and I hated it. I, and like, the last thing I wanted to do was painting, but we had to choose a specialised subject. So, and painting was the only one that would accept me on the course, because I'd failed everything else. So I had to do painting, and then the second year, I, I failed the, the year of, that year of painting. What really appealed to me was when, when my tutor introduced me to the, or showed me the work of Sigmar Polka, and how he'd used everything from daily life and brought it into a painting. It was all this weird kind of surreal stuff. And so for me, it became really exciting to use just anything in a painting and how you could do whatever you wanted. Well, I guess uh, all, all the stuff that I use in paintings has come from daily life somehow. So for this show in particular, all the imagery is from kind of throwaway magazines, kind of discarded uh, fly, like nightclub flyers, posters, advertising. So in that kind of sense, it's all come from a day-to-day -day life. So I'm trying to kind of document everything and, and put it into a painting in that way. When you walk around the city, you kind of see the political posters put up and the, the music posters, and that's sort of signifies the, the, the values of the, of the community. And it's their kind of... So in that, and that's going to change throughout time. So by using that specific stuff in a painting, the paintings kind of become documentation of that time. And the show's called No One Gets Out Alive because all the, all the imagery in the paintings was from, like I said, that, that uh, the sort of throwaway, discarded material that I'd found. And it was really looking at the kind of transience, the transient nature of that stuff and the, and the transient nature of life. When I'm making paintings for a show, depending on what city I'm in, I usually I walk around the city and I'll take photographs of advertising with, of things that are stuck on walls. And then I'll come back to the studio and I'll select imagery and text. And I'll, I'll either draw it up as a stencil and cut it out, or I'll, I'll build a, stick, a silk screen and burn images onto it. And then I'll just start. I'll just start uh, working on canvas and I'll, I'll paint one layer and I'll just paint on top of that and I just keep going all the stuff that I've, I've uh, collected. I haven't seen so much of it uh, yet. I've only been in a couple of days, a few days. I just came from LA and there wasn't too much kind of, uh, too many posters kind of stuck on the walls. But when I came here, like everywhere I go, there seems to be tons and tons of posters that are stuck on like bins and walls and stuff and all like ripped away. And just, it's just really interesting that, um, that there's so much more of that here, I guess. The sort of physical aspect comes in because in a way, it was a kind of a reaction to seeing a lot of conceptual art when I was at college. And there wasn't such a focus on painting back then for, uh, for me. I think I just, it was just really important for me to, to be really involved in the, in the process of creating the art. I, I, I always wanted to be able to do things that not anyone could really do. You know, it, it took a lot of, sort of physical work to create them. That's like, it was just important to me for that. There's always a decision to make to decide when a piece is ready because the, the initial phase is to paint one whole layer and to constantly uh, sort of mask off area, areas and paint on top and you're constantly paint, painting new layers and fragmenting it so I guess there comes a point when you have to make a decision and it just, it just, has to, it just feels right compositionally, it works. It just, I'm sort of satisfied with the process that I've been through to get there. It's a very personal sort of moment when you decide because I, I don't know how it's going to look until it's finished. It's just a completely spontaneous uh, process. In terms of like, imagery and context of the work, I'm always trying to relate it to uh, my personal life in a way. And it's always, it always, I always try to sort of stray, stay true to my own artistic values and my own views of contemporary art. So 
I guess, yeah, it does. Uh, I hope it do sort of become extensions of me personally in a way. F for me, it's more important for the art, to, for the painting to be a byproduct of my uh, sort of creative process. So all the things I, I've, I've sort of gone through to make a painting are more important than the, the piece itself. When, when you're developing your art or you're, or you're going through the process of making something, I don't think you should have any, any limitations on yourself in terms of you can't not do something you shouldn't think is right or whatever. So I think I've, I, did, I, I did a few things about thinking about the sort of consequences and I wanted to kind of reference parts of our history or whatever and there was a, maybe an occasion where I used, I used imagery that I shouldn't have used in a painting and there were some potential lawsuits or whatever. But again, that, that was just the whole, part of the whole process of developing my work. When I made these paintings for LA, the, the use of the sort of bright colours came into it from like, there's such a, a sort of rich history of, of sign painting in LA and for like advertising shops and stuff. So I think it was just natural to bring that element into it. I was using kind of really kitschy, slightly grotesque colours like the fluorescence and I think maybe that came from all the sort of souvenir material that was all over the place. So I just wanted to bring that element into it. And I think like so when I was in Scotland before, we had, I mean it's kind of this, the city is quite, sort of quite a grey, kind of dark city, and I guess I mean, Berlin now seems to me to be quite kind of dark. I guess it's November, or whatever. For these stencils, it was when I started painting. I used to use a lot of really cheap house paint and like spray paint just because yeah, it was cheaper. So I guess that's why I, I brought that in again here because it's always going to be part of my my kind of history of using black and white and that the cheapness of the paint. <laughs> I was looking at the kind of the, the history of, of painting and art and how the female figure has been used sort of throughout history. And so I was trying to just bring that reference in by using like an ultra modern kind of uh, female figure from like from like Laz Mags and like high end fashion and other and sort of all these different kind of things and just and removing them from that context. And is it's like I you take a lot of time to paint something and then just in a second you can paint over the whole thing or destroy the whole thing. So it's it's just. Uh, a strange feeling to kind of just destroy a painting. It's very, yeah, it's very liberating. It's, but again, it comes back to the idea of uh, process and technique, and how for me that's more the kind of the expressive art form as opposed to the final piece that you see. And again, again, it's that the sort of nature of life as well. How it's so, it's so fleeting and transient, and trying to just capture that moment. The first time in my scientific life, I will come out of my death. 